I have the Google Pixel 7 Pro here. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to de-Google this device with the custom ROM Graphene OS. This will also work for the base model of the Google Pixel 7 as well, and it will involve the exact same steps. For those who are not familiar with this ROM, Graphene OS is a custom ROM built for privacy and security. The ROM is based on the AOSP build of Android, and then the developers work to make some drastic improvements to secure the operating system while also protecting your privacy. The team does a lot of work to fill in the gaps from not bundling the Google apps into the operating system as well. And while this video will focus on installing a custom ROM that does not include any apps from Google, you can still use the Google Play Store and Google Play services if you choose to do so. These are installed after the ROM has been flashed to the device, and they are actually sandboxed from the operating system since the developers believe these apps should not be integrated in an invasive way. I'll link to the features page of Graphene OS in the video description below, but you can see a quick overview of what is included in this ROM right here. Naturally, we're gonna be seeing a lot of privacy and security features highlighted here, including Wi-Fi privacy, a more secure fingerprint unlock method, a hardened PDF viewer, their own camera app, encrypted backups, and more. Now before we can begin installing the Graphene OS ROM on the Google Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro, we first need to make sure that the bootloader is unlocked. If you haven't done this yet, be sure to back up your important data and unlock the device. And since I have already done a video dedicated to showing how this is done, I'll link to it down in the description area below for those who may need help with that. After the bootloader has been unlocked, the next thing we need to do is reboot the Google Pixel 7 into fast boot mode. This is also known as bootloader mode. And this is something else that I've already shown you how to do here on the channel. So you can find a link to that video down below as well. Once the device is in fast boot mode, make sure that it is connected to the PC with a USB cable. And then you'll need to visit the Graphene OS install page on a compatible browser. You can find this web installer at grapheneos.org slash install slash web. And I'll be including a link to it down in the video description as well. Just like with using the Android Flash tool from Google, you will need to use a compatible web browser in order to use this web installer from the Graphene OS dev team. You can choose to manually flash the ROM via the command line if you'd like, but this is the easier method for most people. You can see you're going to need either a Chromium based web browser, Vanadium from Graphene OS, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, or the Brave browser. So again, we're going to need to have the bootloader unlocked and the Google Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro needs to be in fast boot mode. And if you're doing all of this from a Linux device, then be sure to read through all of this install page as there are some additional steps that you will need to follow. When you're ready with the device connected to the PC with a USB cable, and while it is in fast boot mode, 
we then need to download the factory images for the device. So we're gonna click on the download release button here. You're gonna see this pop-up appear where we can select a compatible device and then connect. And we're gonna let this web installer download the firmware for our device. Now that the download is complete, we can then click on the flash release button. And once you click it, you are gonna see your Google Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro reboot. You can see that it will automatically handle the flashing of the firmware, rebooting into the bootloader interface, flashing the core operating system, rebooting into the user space fast boot mode and completing. The install process can take some time so be sure that you leave the phone alone. There's no need to handle the device in any way nor should you mess with the USB cable either. We are installing a new firmware onto the Pixel 7 Pro here and if we interrupt the installation process, then it could put our device into a boot loop. You can see there are a lot of files that need to be sent to our device and then written to the proper partition. So we're just gonna be patient while this process is completing. When the installation script has finished, you'll notice that it is going to restart the device and it's going to be booting back into fast boot mode, AKA bootloader mode. Once that's done, you'll be told that it has flashed the firmware and the developer team recommends that you lock the bootloader immediately after Graphene OS has been installed. Since this will wipe all of your user data from the Google Pixel phone, it will save you some time to lock the bootloader now as opposed to doing it later. The dev team notes that this is important as it enables full verified boot. It will prevent using fastboot to flash, format, or erase any of your storage partitions. And it will detect any modifications to any part of the operating system. Some people are going to be installing this custom ROM with security and privacy in mind and locking the bootloader after it has been installed is recommended to keep those security practices in place. So right from this web installer, we can click the lock bootloader button. And then from our device, we need to press the volume down button and then press the power button to confirm we indeed do want to lock the bootloader. This will restart the device, and then it will take you back into fastboot mode where we can see that the bootloader has been locked. From here, we can unplug that USB cable and then press the power button with the start option highlighted so that we can boot into Graphene OS for the first time. This boot may take a bit longer than normal since we have just erased everything on the device. We can see the Graphene OS boot image here.
And after a little bit of time, you can see we're going to be taken to the Android activation screen. And while the bootloader is technically locked now, it's advised to complete this by enabling developer mode, going into the developer options menu, and then disabling the OEM unlocking toggle before we restart the device to enable device protection feature. Doing this will prevent the device from having the bootloader unlocked so easily since anyone who has the device will need to enter your PIN, pattern, or password in order to access that toggle. Now if you wanted to use the Google Play Store and Google Play Services, then we can do that by opening up the Graphene OS app repository application from the app drawer, which is this apps button here. You will need a connection to the internet. But once you open up this app, you can search for Google Play Services and install that from this app repository. Since this includes support for dependencies, once you install Google Play Services, it will also install the Google Services Framework and the Google Play Store application for you automatically. With that done, it is recommended to make an exception to the battery optimization feature of Android for the Google Play Services app. So features like push notifications will work properly in the background. You still have the option of signing into a Google account or not. Some people will choose to install these apps on Graphene OS so that they can use third party apps that rely on it. But even if you do that, know that this does not require you to sign into a Google account. We have just completed the install of the Graphene OS custom ROM on the Google Pixel 7 Pro. You can see that the web installer allows us to de-Google the smartphone very easily. And now the build of Android that you're running is more secure than what Google installs from the factory. This ROM will even be more secure than the popular custom ROMs that you may be more familiar with, like Lineage OS. You should also expect to see the battery life improve dramatically, since it won't have all of those Google services running in the background collecting up your data. Let me know if you would like to see more content about Graphene OS here on the channel. I plan on using this ROM for the next few weeks to gauge performance, battery life, and compatibility with some of the apps that I use regularly.